Good day, students. Today's lesson is from Basic Electrical Engineering, Part A. First unit is DC circuits. Unidirectional quantity. Just have a look at the figure here. It's figure 1.1. There are three parts of figure 1.1. There's A, B, and C. A is the circuit of half-wave rectifier. B is the input given to the half-wave rectifier. And C is the output from the half-wave rectifier. You can note down the circuit because you'll need it for the upcoming definitions and explanations of the unidirectional quantity. There is a source of 50 hertz AC voltage source and a coil across which the voltage is Vs. Current flowing through the resistance is IL and the resistance is RL and the voltage across the resistance is VL. So Vs is the input. You see that in the waveform and IL is the output. It's against time, so that is represented by omega t. Have you noted it down? Let's go to the explanation. In the half-wave rectifier of figure 1.1a, which you just saw, the diode is conducting during the positive half cycles, but is non-conducting during the negative half cycles. Because of this, the circuit clips off the negative half cycles as shown in figure 1.1c. You saw that for the current. We call a waveform like this a half wave signal. This half wave voltage produces a unidirectional load current. This means that it flows in only one direction. This is an example of a unidirectional quantity. So I hope you understood this example. We took a half wave rectifier. And because the current flows in only one direction, it's called a unidirectional quantity. Let's brush up on a few basic definitions of electrical circuits. You would have learned this in your previous classes, uh, but you'll need them more in the classes to come. So we'll just have a quick glance at them. First, we have the independent voltage source. You see it in figure 1.2. If the voltage of a source is constant and will not depend on any parameters of the circuit, it is called an independent voltage source. An independent DC voltage source is symbolically represented in figure 1.2. You see the DC voltage, we use straight lines. The positive has a longer line and the negative has a smaller line. Of course, here it's a multiple voltage source, so we show two such combinations. You can show it just with a single large line and then a small line for the negative side. Note this down, note the figure down. Now let's look at resistance and resistivity. The property of a material due to which it opposes or restricts the flow of current through it is called resistance. The unit of resistance is ohm and its symbol is omega. This is the capital omega of the Greek alphabet that is used for representing resistance. The resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to its length and inversely proportional to its area of cross section. That is R directly proportional to L divided by A. This is how we show resistance. Note down the formula, you would need it for future reference. Or we can also show it to get rid of the proportionality symbol, we can use a constant. So R is equal to rho into L divided by A. Take this as equation 1, that is small Roman numeral 1. Where rho, the Greek letter rho is a constant and is called resistivity or specific resistance of the conducting material. This is the term used for resistivity or specific resistance of the conducting material. So you got to know the definitions of resistance and resistivity. If in equation 1, the equation you see here, R is equal to rho L by A. 
we put l is equal to 1 meter and a is equal to 1 meter square then r is equal to rho you can verify that we get resistance is equal to resistivity when we put the length as 1 meter and the area of cross section as 1 meter square these are the standard units we use Hence, resistivity or specific resistance of a material may be defined as the resistance offered by one meter length of the material having an area of cross-section of one square meter. Another definition for resistivity. From equation one, we have rho is equal to AR divided by L. If you flip around a few terms in equation one we get this formula for rho note down this formula as well for resistivity in the si system of units we can put them all in the standard units rho is equal to a meter square into r ohms the whole thing divided by l meters so when you cancel out the extra meter, you get AR divided by L ohm meter. Hence the unit of resistivity is ohm meter and it is represented as omega M. Now we got to know the unit of resistivity as well. So for resistance, it was ohm. For resistivity, it is ohm meter. Note down the unit and the formula. The electric current. In the outermost orbit of the atoms of conductors, there are free electrons which can be dislodged from the parent atom by the application of an external force. The continuous drift of electrons in a conductor on the application of an external force in a particular direction constitutes the flow of current. The rate at which the electric charge is transferred across a point in a conductor is known as the current flowing through the conductor. So that is the rate. I is equal to dQ by dt. Rate of change we represent by d. You know that. So I can be also written as Q by t. Take this as equation 2. The unit of current is ampere. Remember this. It is ampere. Note down the formula. We'll learn some more definitions in the next class.